Cold Approach teaches you how to have actual conversation because conversation is a give and take. There's moments of pause. And online, you can pause for 12 hours and then go talk to them again. Yeah. Uh, but in person, there will be moments where the conversation runs its course. What do I say next? How do I initiate the conversation again? And I think what I've learned with cold approach is that I'll say, okay, you're a student. We talk a little bit about like, okay, she's in school, Mm -hmm. but I don't want to know about her school. Like I don't want to spend five minutes talking about it. So there's a moment where it's like, okay, what do we talk about next? Mm -hmm. And a girl doesn't want to leave the conversation and ideally shouldn't because that means she's in Mm -hmm. the masculine role. So then it's like you were learning how to, okay, there's a pause. I got to think about something to say that can keep this conversation going. But that's mm-hmm. going to be completely different. And that's just like in real relationships, right? Mm-hmm. When you're with your buddies, you know how you talk about 30 different things in an hour. Yep. You kind of have to have a little bit of that with women too. So that's when it's like, okay, okay, you have New York vibes, right? And now you're on a completely different subject, right? Because a big thing we teach guys is you want to be able to have different subjects to talk about. Mm-hmm. We say like, keep it like two minutes per subject and then move on because guys mm-hmm. will be like, okay, let's talk about school. And then you're spending 20 minutes talking about your d- university experience. <laughs> it's like yeah. girls will get bored that way and then not want to continue talking to you. Yep. And you can layer subjects too, or a conversational thread. So a couple of activities I use, um, it's getting a bit off topic, but we'll bring it back to, to make it make sense. Um, improv type activities. So okay. yes and. Yep. So if I introduce a new variable, you know, it's like, oh, well, no, we weren't in the park actually. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> yes and. Yes, we're walking through the park and it was nighttime, right? And then it had just got done raining and then you build upon it. So yeah. learn, learn the improv skills. And then also too, like storytelling, whatever little anecdotes you want to share, have a couple of those down pat to where you can, where you communicate a ton of information without directly saying, well, I'm Jaren and then I went to college and then I worked here and then I went to grad school and then I went here and then I moved to Mexico. Like, you don't want to do yeah. that. You, you can tell a story that encompasses all those details. So when you layer multiple conversational threads, a good example is watch your favorite stand-up comedian mm, to where they'll right. tell a joke early in the act and then they'll, they'll usually call back to that joke. And at the end, right. it kind of leads to the crescendo. And then the, and then you realize, okay, this act is developing into the climax to where mm. they, they had to set everything up perfectly to get to that point where it's just gut-wrenching laughter. And then, all right, that's it, folks. My time's up. You know, it was great. Lovely crowd. You know, see you next time. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's how you want to manage your, not only dates, but interactions with women. And okay. I, think, I believe you teach this with Cold Approach, too. Um, get out while the vibe's high. Yes, 100%. What I teach you guys is like, okay, three minutes, keep your approaches short, which actually gives a lot of people a lot of relief when they're starting to approach because they're like, I don't want to have to talk to her for 10 minutes. It's like two to three minutes, grab her Instagram. And I think the climax, like the crescendo is getting the Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. And really like when you, when you end on the vibe high, like Jaren says, she's going to leave and remember that last moment she had with you Mm -hmm. when you were laughing, smiling, she was like wanting more. But what I used to do in the beginning was I wanted, I was so excited to talk to her. I would just drag out the conversation and then we would get to that place where it's like, well, I got to go. Yep. Me too. Do you want to go out sometime? It would just be so awkward. And uh-huh. like, you know, she would be like, oh man. And in a, in a weird way, I blew my load too soon. <laughs> I, yeah. I gave too much of myself too soon. So there was no mystery. So she didn't leave going like, oh, who is that Joel guy? Like, I really want to see him again. I didn't, I asked him a ton of questions, but he wouldn't answer them directly. Like, I'm curious, uh-huh. right? She went, oh, he told me his life story in our little five minute approach. Um, yeah, there's nothing left. Nothing left, yeah. So yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, set up a date with him. <laughs> and really learning how to end on the vibe high, right? Because something that, you know, Jaren teaches really well and what I help as well is like, what Jaren teaches really well is we call it speaking women knees. So learning how to speak their language, which is covert. Women are not direct often. Mm-hmm. They, they speak through, you know, questions and like a big part of this is learning how when she says something to infer like, oh, that's not what she means. She means this. So uh-huh. I have to answer it to this, which is what she actually means. And you can learn mm-hmm. that through her energy, through just experience. Again, what we talked about, you got to get the experience in. So with the mystery, bringing it, tying it back here, women want to see you as like a novel that it's going to take 20 years to read through. They don't want a 30 minute, you know, audible quick read, right? They want to figure you out slowly over time. And so learning how to inject that mystery, that takes time to learn, of course. And that's what we're here for, to help you learn that. Like learning how to inject that mystery and be that mysterious guy, that's what's going to make her fall in love. That's what's going to make her uh-huh. want to stick around for months and then obviously if she's hanging out with you for months, she's going to fall in love and then a potential for a long-term relationship develops from that. And I think at the end of the day, you always want to be memorable. So imagine, especially yeah. for reasonably attractive women, how many matches she gets on the dating apps, how many DMs she gets a day. If she posts a story, how many little hearts or comments or emoticons she gets. Mm-hmm. 
and you don't really stick out from the crowd unless you already have something with her. So there's there's plenty of girls that I'll follow. Like I'll like their stories. I'll leave them little comments. We're like we're seeing each other. We know each other. We kind of have a relationship. I'm not just some random guy. Yeah. But in real life, I mean, I, I told you earlier, ask your guy friends. When's the last time you approach a woman in real life? Now, now ask your girlfriends. When's the last time a guy approached you in real life? Yeah. Right. She, she can probably name it. Yeah. Now, if you'll start, when's the last time a guy dropped in your DMs? Like, all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, you'd show up on her phone. Facts. Like, all these unread messages. You, you'll be left on red sometimes. The yeah. Girls I'm actively seeing, I'll be, I'll be left on red. And I know she's not ignoring me. Like, yeah. especially if she's like a micro influencer, influencer. She has a ton of people that are reaching out to her. Mm-hmm. You just get lost in the stack. My message is, sorry guys, but I don't get back to you. I do get back to everyone eventually, but sometimes I. I have a nice backlog of messages. It's like, God, I need a couple hours to go through these. You had 213 messages on your WhatsApp today. Yeah. I was like, wait, you have 213 messages? Um, yeah, I'm cooking like, today. Crap. I'm cooking. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was like, damn. Uh-huh. Sick. I, you know, my email, I clear it out and I have like no messages. Yeah, you're a psychopath. You have zero <laughs> emails in your inbox. Although my inbox is kind of like a record keeper. Okay. It's like, oh, receipt for here. Like, uh, you know, it's all Uber Eats, like oh, okay. flight yeah, receipts yeah. or like stuff like that. But um, guys, it, it, at the end of the day, one thing you don't want to do with women, you can do anything to them. Like obviously don't harm, harass, you know, physically hurt them or anything like that. But you don't want to bore her. There it is. That's some worse. Yeah. That's kryptonite. Yeah, that exactly. Kryptonite. And you'll hear things like, I think we should just be friends or I don't think we're compatible or they'll say in Spanish, like, let's go to no see the other. Like things just didn't catch or they didn't pick up. They're just. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned womenese. I got to the point where I find myself speaking womenese. Mm-hmm. I'll use lines on girls that they've used on me. <laughs> I'll literally say, I don't think we're compatible. Mm-hmm. In terms of like, you live an hour and 40 minutes away and you can't manage a calendar. Like dream girl right there. Yeah. Yeah. We agreed on 6 p.m. You're texting me at 8.30 saying, hey, I'm just getting home. I'm on my way. You're like, nah, I'm doing other stuff. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So like for me, like it, I could be attracted to her. I could like the girl, but I'm literally, Hey, we're just, that's, this isn't working. We're not compatible. If you're in the neighborhood, you know, hit me up when you're free. And if I'm free too, maybe we can meet up, but like, we're not, we're not going to plan stuff anymore. Gotcha. Cause clearly that's not a strong point of yours. And for me, that's something that's kind of important. Right. And you're a guy. So you communicate, you actually say that women will just ghost you <laughs> yeah. and never talk to yeah, you again. Exactly. So, yeah. but we're men. So we want to be respectful and, you know, we obviously you teach that as well, how to, uh-huh. you know, how to yeah, be, manage the relationship, pace the relationship. You're, yeah. you're always in the lead role, whether you want to, whether you want to be yes. or not. Yeah. And I think, you know, cold approach, there's another one. Yeah. Where like we alluded to it earlier. This guy has the confidence to come up and talk to me. He's not weird. He's not awkward. He just comes right up. It also helps you with yourself too. Like I am worth putting myself out there and I am an attractive yes. object, objectifying men here. <laughs> I'm an attractive Canceled. dating prospect. And a lot of guys come into this too. I, I've had, I had coaching calls earlier today. Well, do I want to be like this or do I want to show this? This is that like show it all. Show it all. We're, we're human beings. We're, 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 we're dynamic. I'm a different person with you than I am with other guy friends of mine than I am with my gym buddies and I am with my coworkers than I am with like my grandparents or like yeah. my family. I'm still me at the end of the day, but there's different versions of my personality I put out there. If I see my sister and I start talking about experiences that you and I had here in Mexico, she's never been to Mexico City. She'll have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm still me. So you need to be able to do that in real time to gauge the situation. Again, going back to the improv or stand-up type thing, yes and, to gauge the issue. Situ- to gauge the situation, be an active participant in the conversation and an active listener to know how to banter back and forth. And again, at the end of the day, what this really communicates to the girl is that you are not socially inept. Mm-hmm. You have social skills and it, yeah. it, and, it, and it takes practice. None of us are born. Well, maybe some of us are if you have that God-given talent, but yeah. none, of, none of us – None of us dropkick our way out of the womb coming in the world like, all right, ladies, here I am. Let's go. You have to develop that as you go. Yeah. I think charisma is the word for it. Like charisma Uh is a skill. I think growing up with maybe – I think how we grew up really affects that. So like I know this Mm. that like some friends that I have that grew up with like really healthy families, stable. Their parents were really social. Those people exist. (laughs) They have no problem with this. But for a lot of us, like myself, yourself, I came from an introverted family. I came from trauma. So therefore, yep. um, I, I didn't know how to properly communicate. And it did take a little time. I think a lot of you guys that are watching this are like in the tech space too. So you're on your computer all day. You don't get a lot of human interaction. I am. I'm in here working all yeah. day. And then I go out and I have to flip a switch. I'm like, okay, you're... It's practice. It's yes. like game mode, 100%. not like dating day mode. Not like dating game mode necessarily, but game mode. I'm out in the real world and I have to present myself to people. 
all. Yep. So it's a definitely, it's definitely, I agree. It's definitely a skill you got to learn and practice. Um, but what's, what's good is that like you can learn it quickly. Like it doesn't take years yep. to learn. Um, you, like you just said, you just can't, you just got to learn how to not be super weird and awkward. 